Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Today y Mañana. I'm Alex. This is Xavier. Thanks so much for joining us today. As always, we are presented uh, by Emergent Financial Services. We are powered by Cristel Noel State Farm Agency, and we are partnering with Forward Adelante, the premier Latino networking group here in Charlottesville, Virginia. And as always, we are on the I Love Seville Network. So thanks so much for joining us today. We have a huge show today. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have from Swaz Seye Mosevich from uh, Revelation Vineyard going to be joining us. And then later on in the show, Phil Lytosh and Martin Bush from Charlottesville Tree Service uh, will be joining us. So we're going to start, of course, we've got some huge news um, coming out because I think we've been, we've been talking resources for entrepreneurs, Latino entrepreneurs, any kind of entrepreneur uh, recently. And one of the ones that has popped up a lot is restaurants. I mean, we've talked with some restaurant owners that, you know, just about the difficulties, the challenges that they faced in 2020 and are continuing to face probably, probably the in, this probably year. Probably the industry that maybe had the most challenges. I mean, obviously airlines mm -hmm. and, and hotels, et cetera. Et Anything in, I think hospitality, hospitality airlines, but hotels. But certainly the restaurants and, and part of it because Remember, you, you shut down, then you start again, and then you shut down again. And, and we all know that food doesn't last forever, right? So exactly. the minute you open up and all of a sudden you buy all the food you need and they shut you down again, there's a lot of waste there. Um, but before we even start, I just wanted to um, congratulate Jerry. Uh, Jerry Miller on his announcement for running for the Board of Supervisors yes, in Albany so I County, see. I think. You know, and, and I'm excited about it only because, I mean, he's a very energetic person, as we all know. Um, he's got business acumen, which I think is very important. When you think about governments, uh, running a government, it's, it's almost like running a business. It's not a daycare center, let's, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Running a government is about how do, we, how do we take that community forward, both from a perspective of make everybody's lives better. Exactly. And part of it is, is, from an economic point of view, how do we make everybody become, um, I don't want to use the word wealthier, but become better involved in what they're doing, mm -hmm. what they love to do, so they themselves can have a good life. And I think he, he can bring a lot of creative ideas to the table. Um, I know he loves Charlesville, uh, he loves the outdoors, um, and he loves the community, so I think it's gonna be, um, uh, I think it's gonna be great. So congratulations, Jerry, on that. It'll be exciting, it'll yeah. be exciting. And if, if you, if you can hear a tar in the distance, I can assure you that is not Xavier's tar. He, he, he has behaved today. Really? So he did not leave his car on to be uh, making yes, noise. I, I didn't press that sure. little alarm button and say, let's see what happens if I hit that. Okay. Let's see, let's see what we can do in today's, uh, today's show. So it's, yeah, that, that is exciting news. Just remember, I mean, I feel like it's all of what we're all about on the show. Is just how can we uplift the community? How exactly. can we really help all these wonderful entrepreneurs that live here thrive? Yes. And so it's exciting to see just people that have, like Jerry that have the passion to do that. That's right. You know, exactly. in all fields. Exactly. All right. So, so you, so want, you want to start speaking, with the yes, restaurant? Speaking of, of surviving <laughs> and just really and hopefully thriving in this new 2020, we have some big news. Um, for those who have been following, I mean, he, there's been a new push for a restaurant revitalization uh, fund. And that's coming out of the, the, you know, the past uh, stimulus packages, the American Rescue Plan, um, as they call it. So there's going to be a $28 billion fund. There's no start date on this yet. But when it does begin, we'll be sure to let you know. And there's going to be a 21-day period that's really going to emphasize small business owners. So we just wanted to sort of get ahead of this and really put the news out there for restaurant owners in the community, for small business owners that are in that space. So food truck restaurant, catering, any kind of that era, you are eligible if you fit the other requirements here. Wine tasting, I mean, taverns, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible. It, it, the reach is enormous, and I think it's going to help a lot of people. It is, it is going to be very helpful. And there was news, so the key thing is there was news for a while that you were going to need a Dunn's number and a Sam's number, which are Business identification numbers. I love um, that word. That's numbered. Fortunately, Dunce. there's been some great advocacy there. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> well, can you yeah, imagine right. having all the everyone have to try to figure out how to get it done? Yeah, uh, Sam's. I didn't even know what Sam's was prior to looking up. How do I tell people how to get a Sam's number? But fortunately, there's been great advocacy there, and that won't be necessary. Okay. It is looking like for this. That's the good. key things for the restaurant revitalization fund. And we're gonna repeat this in English and Spanish. Vamos a repetirlo en inglés y en español. Um, is that if your business was in operation in 2019, you're basically going to be eligible for the difference between your 2019 gross receipts and your 2020 gross receipts. If you were not in business in 2019, let's say you started last year, I know there's a lot in our community 
that started That's right. we, we just last year. I mean, we know quite a few. Um, then you're going to be basically looking at your gross receipts minus certain eligible expenses, and you're going to be compensated for that. In other words, what, what, what were my expenses minus my receipts in 2020, and the government will compensate. The SBA, the Small Business Administration, will help compensate you. So this works so, somewhat like a PPP, a second draw of a paycheck protection, and obviously they will remove from your, what you're receiving, anything you receive from paycheck protection. Well, in addition, one of the things that I, that I also read and I think is right is, for example, let's say in 2019, you were only in business six months. So you're gonna take those six months, multiply by two, so assuming it's 12 months, and that's going to be your, your expenses, right? Exactly, so you can that's that. correct. So even if you were in business just one month, you take that one month, right? You look at your, your cost, right? And then you multiply that by 12 mm -hmm. and say, and your revenue is multiplied by 12 and you say, here, here we are, this is the number I'm gonna use. So, so there's a lot of flexibility here. That's what's there important. Is, there is, exactly. And, you know, and it, if, if you did receive Paycheck Protection Program, that does not mean That's you right. are not eligible. What will just happen is that what you receive via PPP will probably be deducted from the amount that you're eligible to receive from this fund. Key thing, remember, first uh, 21 day periods, they are going to be prioritizing small businesses um, owned and controlled by women, veteran, veterans, or socially and economically disadvantaged groups. So that you're Latino entrepreneurs, you're minority entrepreneurs. So you're definitely going to be eligible for prioritized in the first 21 days. So we will keep you updated on that. We're a great resource for that um, on the show. Watch us here. You can always call us at Emergent Financial Services. Other great resources, New Hill Development Corp has been really on top of this. Small Business Development Center. They're hosted by CIC. As we talked with Carolina just right, last exactly. week, you can always call there, talk to Carolina, and she'll be able to get you in touch with the right person to talk to at SBDC, which has done great work uh, making sure there's all, a lot of information on this, on their site, and other resources that you can get um, if you've struggled in 2020, 2021 as a small business. So, and then, so, no, sí, no, no. And, and, entonces, pues, uh, hemos aprendido que la asociación Nacional de Restaurantes um, uh, está ofreciendo uh, becas uh, que es, o son fondos de revitalización, re, revitalización para restaurantes, um, para um, varias, um, eh, eh, también para puestos de comida, camiones de comida, bars, tabernas. Um, y lo importante aquí es que estos fondos, como digo, son, son una beca, ¿no? así que no, no son un préstamo, sino son becas. Uh, segundo, eh, creo que la, por ahora, por lo, por lo que dijo Alex antes, um, es más fácil en este minuto um, tratar de, de obtener estas becas. Uh, primero querían un, unos números que se llaman Don y, y Sam, que son muy mm -hmm. difíciles de conseguir, pero sí. gracias a Dios eso no, no es la, el, la situación. Um, lo que va a pasar es, por ejemplo, si usted tenía ya su, uh, su negocio en, en 2019, pues todos los gastos que tenían, que son elegibles en, en, ese, en ese periodo, Uh, entonces los compara con el año 2020 y el, el, la diferencia es lo que pueden uh, obtener. ¿no? Por ejemplo, también si, si solamente tenían el restaurante o, o el negocio por seis meses en, en, en 2019, pues lo que pueden hacer es tomar los gastos de esos seis meses, multiplicarlos por dos, como si hubiese sido un año completo, Uh, y, y esa es la, la diferencia entre lo que pudieron obtener en 2020 y 2019. Así que hay maneras diferentes de obtener esta, esta clase de, de ayuda. Um, y, y bueno, lo importante es que creo que es, hay una ventana de 21, 21 días. Sí, um, claro esta sí. ventana no está abierta todavía, pero es, es importante estar uh, preparado para esto. Es, es decir, si, si tenéis números, eh, otra cosa, por ejemplo, si, si empezaron su negocio en 2020 y tienen ciertos gastos, uh, estos gastos es importante sí. de decidir cuántos son los gastos sí. y esto es lo que, lo que tienen que tener para estar, dar al, 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 al fondo para decir, estos fueron mis gastos en 2020, entonces los podrán ayudar. Así que, y, y no solamente eso, creo que he leído que si, si, si querían empezar el restaurante o... O, o, o el negocio en 2021 y los gastos fueron en 2020, también pueden obtener parte de la beca. Así que sí. es importante 
ahora que ya sabéis la información, empezar a buscar los números, sí. estar, estar preparados para cuando hay la, la solicitud, la solicitud en 20, en, que serán 21 días. Pero, este, a, a, habrá un, una, ventana una ventana de, de 21 uh, días que la, la prioridad será uh, uh, dueños pequeños, sino negocios sí. pequeños, uh, negocios um, cuyos dueños son latinos, minorías, o y, de mujeres, de mujeres o, de o de veteranos. Muy bien, muy bien. Entonces, sí. eso es lo importante. Los, los primeros 21 días, días. serán aplicables precisamente para los negocios, estos negocios sí, pequeños, claro. y es lo más importante. Muy bien. Entonces, Entonces pues nosotros, uh, a medida que es, es, aprendemos más información, la podemos... Vamos a compartir uh, con, con ustedes, con ustedes sí. por ser uno. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the, the goal of the show, to make sure we're just sharing the information, you know, making sure that uh, all of us, Latino entrepreneurs, every entrepreneur in charge will can get access to the, to the help that they need. To really, because that's the lifeblood, that's the lifeblood of the, of the economic community here, and we want to make sure it continues to succeed. And that's what's important. Forward. I mean, we, we've made this case uh, many times as the small business that's really, really struggled, right? The large businesses seem to have flourished, if anything else, right? Um, but the small businesses have really uh, been hit hard by this pandemic. So Absolutely. It's, um, it's wonderful to see these type of, um, you know, help um, mm -hmm. so, so that these small businesses can hopefully get off the ground and get going here and in going, 2021. Yeah. And, and grow and thrive. Yeah, exactly. Which exactly. is the goal. You know, be sure if you have other news, share it with us in the comments, um, other apps, other resources that you know about. Be sure to let us know. We'll share them on air. Be sure to share today's show uh, with your friends, with anyone who you think could benefit from knowing about this, from access to the, to the fund, and then we can put you in touch uh, with even more, even more uh, knowledgeable resources Uh, than ourselves on, exactly. on just all the different small business resources in the community yeah. that they're there. We've got some people already excited uh, for today's first interview. We've got Jerry Miller saying he's very grateful for us. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, of course. Pauline Brunetti says hello. Hello, Pauline. Thank you for watching the show today. So we're, I, think, I think we definitely have an exciting crowd ready for our, our first, our first guest. guest. Who actually like, can benefit probably from this, right? I possibly, mean, yeah. Because I mean, they're a vineyard, right? And uh, if they have a tasting room or anything like that, that can be helpful. So who knows, count, you know? Yeah. But. Exactly. But we're excited to welcome to the show today Francoise Seye Moisevich. I'm hoping I, I did that correctly. I had a little less. That's why I let you do that. I'm just that's why say you let me, that's, that's why you let me take this. Um, <laughs> so we're going to welcome Francoise to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today, Francoise. Thank you for inviting me. So, I mean, tell us a little about, about yourself. For those that don't know Revelation uh, Vineyard, did you, did you always have a passion for, for making wine, or how did it come about that you came to start this vineyard here in, in our local community? So I didn't grow up in the wine industry. I actually grew up uh, in a country that did not produce wine until fairly recently. So it's a fairly new passion. <laughs> um, not drinking wine, that's been... That's been a long An passion. older, older passion. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we came to it, uh, my husband and I, um, gradually. Uh, we lived in California we, uh, for a while, and we in, really enjoyed um, the, the wine industry there. And it also uh, gave us the idea that maybe one day in our retirement, we would possibly start a vineyard. Um, then we, we moved away from California, sort of forgot about the idea, but continued our, you know, wine tasting, wine knowledge, or whatever we could. And then we moved to D.C. for uh, jobs. And we took one uh, so-called fatal trip to Virginia that made <laughs> us fall in love with Madison County. And then we tried to, we decided that we would buy a property that would be our weekend home and that we would try to start a um, small vineyard for the weekend. Um, and uh, then, you know, one thing led to another. You can't really have a, a vineyard, a weekend vineyard. No, uh, Mother Nature that. doesn't That's right, <laughs> stop yeah. during the exactly, week when you have exactly. another job. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to be semi-serious about it, you, you really need to follow up. Um, and then we, we realized that our original property was not the best for a vineyard, so we acquired the, the next hill, which is mm -hmm. perfect, uh -huh. and that's where all our production is uh, coming from at the moment. 
And then, uh, you know, get to middle age, I guess, and decide that maybe you'd like to not be in that same job anymore. So I retired from my academic position and um, to devote my time to the vineyard. And um, so the other step is that we bought another property that, where we have a vineyard and a tasting room now. And now we are about to launch into the construction of our winery, the, the production facility. Okay, beautiful. So nice. it was, you know, it wasn't, it was uh, a path, uh, a meandering path to where we are. So, so let me get this straight. So you left California, which growing grapes, I would assume, is so much easier than Virginia. And then you come to Virginia. <laughs> well, you went to D.C., but you come to Virginia and you decide to grow grapes, which, you know, we all know how easy it is to grow things in Virginia because, you know, there's, there's humidity, there's bugs, there's deer, there's squirrels, there's, there's turkeys, right? I mean, so tell us a little bit about the challenges of growing, you know, grapes in, in Virginia. And, and I guess what type of grapes are best? Uh, well, um, I'll, I'll take the first question. <laughs> Go for the first one. <laughs> uh, how easy it is to grow grapes in Virginia? It's not easy. I don't think it's easy anywhere except maybe California where you don't really need to, um, to spray very much. Um, however, they don't have any water, and we do have water. Uh, so, uh, and we don't have fires, so we can... You know, we we have advantages in this in this environment. Um, there are, uh, you know, the humidity is an issue, so you have to keep on top of all the the, the fungus that are uh, lurking around. Uh, we also have tales of hurricanes at the end of the season, so mm -hmm. just about when we are about to harvest, right. which is uh, really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but some years are absolutely fantastic, like 2019. It, I'm not saying it was an easy year, but it was uh, less hard, and it, it, we produced amazing wines. Um, last year we had spring frost, so uh, right. it's not not so easy between now, so whatever date we are today, uh, April um, 7th, I think. April 8th today, eight, yes, eight, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I'm still yesterday. Uh, time um, flies, right? yeah. that's all I know. <laughs> and, and Mother's Day, we had at my, our vineyard eight frost episodes. Wow, last wow. year in May. Uh, yes, wow. so end of April, beginning of May, and the worst one was actually Mother's Day okay. morning. So um, we tried to do everything, but we lost about half of our crop, Whoa. which wow. is um, sad, but we have friends that lost absolutely everything. Okay. So we are very lucky that we managed to make some wine last year. So it is not easy to, to, um, to, to do agriculture in, in, in Virginia, but you know, that's, I think every place has a, a challenge. So what grapes are really adapted? Um, we, um, we are really blessed in, in Virginia with a really great extension office, uh, the uh, Virginia Tech uh, Extension um, Network, and with the research uh, institute, um, in, uh, research station in Winchester. Mm -hmm. And they did uh, trials. Uh, they, they, they did variety trials. They take a long time, but about 10 years ago, they, they tried a few varieties like Petit Monsang and Tana, that, and they realized that they are really good uh, varieties to grow now. Okay. And, and now they're doing new, um, new trials starting uh, last year or this year for uh, varieties that might be better adapted to uh, climate change. So... Uh -huh. We, we have the whole industry, the whole uh, viticulture scene in, in Virginia is really be, um, benefiting from, from the research from Virginia Tech. So wow. uh, we were lucky that we didn't start our vineyard in, uh, in the early 90s and that we only started it in the, uh, 2006. Mm -hmm. And so we could benefit from a lot yeah. of knowledge of people, of growers that were the real pioneers in, in Virginia, as well as from the Virginia Tech uh, research. So we did plant Petit Monsanto, we did plant Tana, and they're doing fabulously well. Um, they're not, 
Tana is actually a less difficult to grow um, in Virginia than, than some of the other varieties. So we, we, we took that, that information and to decide what to plant. Right. But also there are, there's, you have to also decide what kind of wine you like to drink. Mm. Um, so <laughs> if you I mean, can't you, find mean, you mean red versus white? Or? Oh, no, <laughs> the, the, the types of... No, I know. I know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are um, some varieties that I'm not... I, I wouldn't know how to make a good wine from right. because they mm. haven't been around for, for, for that long. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about varieties that I encountered in Belgium, for example, uh, Solaris. I wouldn't know what kind of wine to make from that. So uh, my husband and I decided that we would stick with mostly Vitis vinifera, which are just the, the, the usual uh, varieties, you know, Chardonnay, Merlot, Pinot Gris, okay. Viognier. Oh, okay. um, so we, um, we, we stuck to those. We have also Cabernet Sauvignon. We we have a couple of hybrids because we have um, we tried to grow a lot of things on on that experimental vineyard at first, and we realized that a lot of varieties were not doing well. So we we uh, got rid of everything and planted a hybrid, which is Vidal Blanc, which is doing very well for us. Uh, last year in our new vineyard, we we'll, we planted Albarino. Uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. Oh, and, uh, my brother Nicholas, my brother who who helped us put together this interview, he would be very excited. He's a yeah. big fan of Albarino. And uh, why we planted Albarino is that I fell in love with the taste of the wine, mm. and mm -hmm. uh, so that's you know personal choice, personal taste, uh, also well, that's, guided. That's important, right? I mean, if you grow something that you really like, I'm assuming that's even yeah. that's even better. So well, somebody you don't drink it all, right? Yeah, <laughs> if I can't sell it, I have to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what are some of the things that you decide yeah, you can sell that you definitely enjoy the the wine, the process of, of doing the grapes and, and deciding what wines to do? Are there any other aspects of like being an entrepreneur and owning a vineyard that you really enjoy? Well, um, I I really like the fact that I. Um, if I have an idea, I can pursue it, and mm -hmm. I can develop it to the best of my ability. I don't have any hindrance. Of course, money is always a hindrance, but uh, funding is a hindrance, mm -hmm. sometimes a red, some red tape. But before you get there, you, you, you have an idea, you have a start a project, you can really develop opportunities for yourself. And I, I like problem solving. I like... And problem solving maybe is a big word, but um, I like being able to hop over barriers, mm -hmm. and um, that's 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 fun to me. Yeah. Um, also, I like uh, the freedom to collaborate with other businesses, and especially during this pandemic, we've done mm -hmm. we've tried to do that. Um, so we, we like supporting the local community, and and through the business we. We try to do that. So, as an entrepreneur, I can use the business not on, only to to benefit the corporation and its employees, but mm -hmm. also the the local community. Um, you know, in terms of holding benefits, helping artist communities, um, selling local um, local food items, um, having a pop up store so that okay. we can have people every weekend, artisans and and craftsmen and farmers sell their wares where they couldn't really do nice. um, do that uh, during this pandemic um, because shows, you know, craft shows were cancelled, exactly. uh, farmers market um, were going but they were difficult to, to do. The logistics mm -hmm. sure. of them is not sure. so easy. So I like that aspect that I can use my business to support those around us. And, and also, if I have an idea, I can follow it up. Um, I don't have to ask a boss. Of course, I have to consult with my husband. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, in, I can push it. 
and I can present an, a, a concept, an idea, and then see how it goes. That's amazing. That's such a beautiful thing about really entrepreneurship that it's not. I think sometimes people have the mistake of thinking, well, when you would don't start your own business, it becomes all about, well, just my business. But it really doesn't. I mean, so many entrepreneurs, we care about other businesses and helping them grow, and we're able to do it in a, in a really unique way because we're in charge of our own, of our own company. No, absolutely. And our own, our own yeah. business. Oh, we have some, we definitely have some, some fans here. We have Rosalia de Rosalia Tordado says, beautiful story, Francoise, good luck. And when you do your job with passion, everything will go fantastic. Oh, she wants you to send, uh, she wants to know when uh, you will send wine in New York. I can send wine to New York now. Oh, already, already, <laughs> Rosalia, you, you, can, you can have wine sent to New York. Uh, Trudy Lloyd says, great to see you live, Francoise. You tell your story so well. You're a great business and brand ambassador. Thank you. So that's, that's definitely true. You can see the passion uh, come through. So, I mean, I, I guess, tell us a little bit about more about how you navigated 2020. Because I know you, said, you mentioned that you were doing some, you were able to be a, a safe place for other businesses, to artisans to show their wares, and that how did you, for just for your own business in terms of selling wine or people coming to the tasting room, how were you able to navigate the trickiness of last year and even into this year? Well, we, um, it was difficult. <laughs> um, but I, I think it, and adjusting to forever changing rules and regulations mm -hmm. was tricky. Yep. However, in the wine industry, we are blessed with another organization in Virginia, which is the Virginia Wineries Association. Mm -hmm. And they really stepped up. They, they had Zoom calls every week with a lawyer, uh, Mary Beth uh, Williams, who's uh, on retainer with the association, to help us navigate what these rules were meant in a very practical way. Mm -hmm. And after those, those calls, then I, I, could, I could reflect and discuss with Julian, my husband, what we could do and what we were willing to do and what we couldn't do. So we closed for a while completely mm -hmm. and then just reopened for pickup. Um, and then that's when we decided that we could do deliveries. We could do uh, deliveries in the, in the vicinity, right. so in Madison County, but um, I also spent a couple of days a, a week in D.C. because my husband still is practice in D.C., so I thought I can also deliver in D.C. So we, our customers actually supported us that way. Um, then we reopened when we f thought that we could reopen in a safe way. Uh, we, we, tr we don't do tastings anymore, like the traditional tastings right, right. where you pour each wine. We have flights, so we had to adjust to that. You know, you have to find a, a, tr a vehicle for glasses or cups or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to make sure that we were not going to fill up the landfill with lots of plastic. Mm -hmm. So we only started offering uh, uh, flights. Once we, we were fairly confident that, well, completely confident actually, that we could use our own glasses and uh, or people could bring their own glasses sure, and then sure. we could use them. Um, because we were only, off, only offered bottle sales at first, which was tricky because new customers don't know the wine. Mm -hmm, yep. Do you want to buy a bottle if you really if you don't, don't know? That's right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, yeah, it's very, it's very so that that was difficult, and that, um, but then when we reopened, um, I mean for tastings. Uh, then, then we we were able to use our our glasses that that really helped, and then uh, we we stopped our uh, regular activities like we we usually have a benefit for the literacy council with a, um, a also series we had to to cancel that altogether, mm -hmm. but we could still display the artists on one nice. wall of the cabin, even though w everything is, uh, all, the, all, all the business is conducted outside, uh, people still need to come in to go to the bathroom or to <laughs> come and pay, so they can, still see, they, they can still see. And then um, uh, I had employees who didn't want to come back to work. 
so I had to recruit new employees. And one of them is actually a, a fabulous uh, furniture maker who, whose shows were canceled. Oh. And so that gave us the idea of doing the pop-up uh, so that she could uh, uh, show her, her wonderful pieces and hopefully sell them um, um, on one weekend. And then since she did it, then we then thought, and maybe other people could do it also. So we had uh, jewelers, farmers, uh, um, wood turners, um, different crafts, fiber artists. And then we, we, the next thing was to see what we could use for uh, snacks and food with the wine. And again, we look to the local community for, for cheeses and I make some of the items, but um, that, that's how we navigated, uh, tried to that's awesome. help us what's and that, help uh, others. <laughs> it's, a well, great, that's a wonderful, it's a great story. Yeah, yeah it's a great story. It's, um, it's nice. I mean, it's nice to see um, people survive. Right? People, you know, you have a, like you said, you, you had a dream and, uh, you, know, and, and you, you followed that dream even even at a later age, it's like nice to be able to say later age like mine. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> to be able to say this is something that I like. And let me let me let me do mm -hmm. something in that fashion mm -hmm. and uh, and then make it work. So and, exactly. and it's like you know, especially when it comes to wine, uh, if you like to drink it, that can become a passion very quickly, <laughs> exactly. right? So, so well, thank, thank you so you. much thank for joining so us, Francois. It's been well, a real pleasure. Thank you very pleasure. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, that was that was fun. And, and I still there was even even later there was there's still some comments coming in. For Francoise, definitely people Thank congratulating you. her. Some of them are in French, so I will not be able to. <laughs> so you're not going to say them? Come I'm not on, going try, to read, try. I will best. not attempt to read the entire thing, but basically, Aden saying what a great brand ambassador she was and wishing her congratulations and what a great enterprise, what a great business. Exactly. exactly. Uh, Revelation Vineyard yeah. is. So be sure to check it out. Uh, Nicholas was very pleased. He said we were correct that they love Alberino, that he loves Alberino. So, and, and he says it was very inspiring. So, so Nick, Nick was very pleased, I can Nick tell. Nick was pleased, yes. Well, uh, we'll with this to, interview. We'll have to try and try one of those bottles. Exactly. Well, we'll, have to, we'll have to so get him not, an Alberino. It's not too far away. Yeah, right? we'll have so. to get him an Alberino just to say, exactly. to say thank you. Exactly. You know, there's not a, and it really is just amazing to see different entrepreneurs, not just going through tough times, but also then connecting with others, uh, growing their business, admiring the, just the way that, I love what she said, like to be able to take an idea and pursue it. Right. And not have to worry about the red, the red tape. Other than asking her husband for his uh, his counsel. On well, that. Other, listen. There's other in every business. There's some challenges, and of exactly. course, uh, you know, listen. Growing grapes. I mean, I, I just grow a few vegetables here and there. I know there are challenges. Grow vegetables, so <laughs> or a tomato. So it's growing grapes. There's always you know. a challenge, for sure. And, then, and to speak, speaking of challenge, we've got another set of entrepreneurs here. This is going to be. This is a, a different challenge. Uh, this is a different challenge. Yeah. I, I got to <laughs> tell a story. I mean, here we have Martin so, and Phil. Martin, right? so Hello, Phil Whitehouse, Martin Bush, Charlottesville Tree Service. Guys, thanks for, for joining thank us you, today. Thank you for coming by. But uh, so last year, <laughs> one of our poplar trees got hit with lightning, right? Believe it or not. And, and my wife actually saw it. She said, I think one of the trees got hit by lightning. I'm saying, yeah, come on, give me a break. What's the chances of that, right? But the neighbor actually calls it, one of your trees don't look by. very well. So I kept looking up. I said, I don't see anything. But when I got close to the tree, there was a huge burr mark at the bottom. And you could see the crack come down oh, right in the middle of the tree. I remember that. It was crazy. Right? So, I, so I, you know, I reached out to a few people in Charlesville uh, Tree Service, and Tripp came out. Um, and the nice thing is he came out exactly when he said he was come out. So he got there on time. He was there. And he walks around the back and he says, yeah, this, this thing, I mean, it's got to come down, right? So he goes, you know, we have different ways. We can, you know, go up there, cut it up into pieces and bring it down, or we can, you know, just let it fall. And I'm saying, you know me, it's like, what's the cheapest? Said, what's the most <laughs> frugal way to do this? He goes, we could just cut it down and let it fall. And I'm looking, I'm saying, let this thing fall. I mean, this thing's like 90 feet tall. This yeah, is not like tall. a little, right? It's huge. So then he says, yeah, we can do this. And there was a couple other trees that you know, looked half dead. I said, how about that one? That one says, yeah, put it this way, put it that way. I said, okay, no problem, let's do it. Then all of a sudden, Martin comes with this crew, right? And I go to Martin, I said, Martin, uh, let me just tell you, this guy's got to go that way, that guy's got to go. And he's looking at me, he's like, first of all, I know my job, okay? <laughs> and second of all, because I'm, I'm telling him this, because I'm looking at saying, this huge poplar, it's got maybe like 12 inches of 
you know, give on either side. Because if they don't get it right, then that tree's coming down, and that other tree's coming back down. I'm saying it could be a mess back here, right? With your expertise. You and of course, first thing he says is, well, let me just say, see this crack down here? Because um, the biggest worry was, is it going to hit the house? Because there was a house next door, right? Mm -hmm. So if it went the wrong way, and then it hits the house, Pitching. right? So he says, there's a big crack in the middle, and we have to make sure we do this right, because once you start cutting that tree, you don't know. Now, of course, now I'm getting nervous. I'm saying, uh-oh. <laughs> but I tell you, I don't know exactly who did all the cutting and the wedging, whatever, but whoever it was, you know, and I know Martin was there, boom. I mean, exactly what they said. I don't know how these guys do it, but, but I mean, it's terrific. What you guys do is, is really unbelievable, but... You know, and, and I know you're a veteran-run firm, and tell us, tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you started this, this company, but, yeah, you know, it's right. fantastic so far what I've well, seen. Well, first I'll say is uh, I think my biggest concern was actually getting killed by that tree, not, not the neighbor's <laughs> house. Gee, thank you, Mark. <laughs> but, uh, but it did go well. It was great. Uh, so, yeah, th thank you guys for having us here. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I can say a little bit. So I, I was active duty Army, as was Trip. You know, the third of the Three Stooges can't be this, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I, I did about four years active uh, Army, and then I uh, got out, joined the Guard, and actually started a construction company with my brother. So this is okay. my second uh, kind of business venture here. Um, but bounced around, ended up working for the government, really good job, great benefits. Um, you know, DA civilian where, you know, I basically I will hit retirement unless I kill somebody first or fall asleep my, at my desk. Well, those are the kind of the two that will get you fired. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've, I've known Phil for a long time. We've, yeah. we've known each other. Like 30 years. 30-some-odd 30, 30 years. And he had been, you know, pestering me to, to uh, get off the government to, you know, and you, let, let's do something. He was an entrepreneur already. And so we'd been brainstorming all different ideas. Uh, I think we had talked about custom forestry and mm -hmm. uh, timber milling and all, all kinds of things, but um, ended up on urban forestry. And I don't know if you want to yeah. talk a little bit why we, we chose that one. But. Well, it just it kind of fit with what we were doing. Kind of our, actually, honestly, the biggest thing was the the barrier to entry in terms of cost overhead I can think so. was relatively low. Because mm -hmm. we had been looking at uh, doing like low impact logging, forestry management stuff, but you start talking about large equipment and you know, bef when I was uh, kind of adding up the scope of what we, capital expenditure to get mm -hmm. it going, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. Whereas we were able to start with, I think it was about 10 to $15,000 just start our business. Okay. Um, and so that was really, and it was in the tree arena, which was uh, an aspect that we liked. I have a custom sawmill at my home uh, and that's one of the things I've loved doing okay um, we've all done firewood so and then I've also at my place I've been clearing pasture land so I'd been doing so kind of building on um, kind of just experience of like okay we've, we're doing a lot of felling mm -hmm. doing some milling so we're get, doing a lot with wood we're outside enjoying that um, I have a background in uh, industrial rope access, so using ropes to access unique structures and, and, uh, and that sort of stuff. So it just ended up being a fit for us in terms of we can get into the climbing side of arboristry right. be, from that experience, we, and we like doing the, the just working outside and working with wood, and we like working with each other. And that's one as we've been growing. Um, we've had days where like Martin and I, like we're working at different sites with mm -hmm. different crews. And at the end, you know, especially if we have a week of that, I, I'll come back to Martin and say, like, hey, that was, we made good money. I don't want to do that again because part of what I really like doing is working with you and with mm -hmm. Trip. And so, so it's kind of at the moment we're in that balance of how do we grow, but how do we actually enjoy what we're doing too? Well, you know, I, I, one of the things I noticed is um, when, you know, Trip came down and, and talked to me about, and, and you know, I know you guys are coming also to do some other work, but it's his knowledge about trees that really mm -hmm. caught my attention. And it's not just, uh, here's a tree, how do I cut it down, here's how we do it, but his knowledge about the different trees, I mean, he knew every tree, and I said, you know, is that tree over there, is that, is that like dying, or is it alive, what's the story? So he's able to give me some information about the tree, you know, the, it's, uh, you know, it's the health of the tree, and I think that's important because, I mean, 
Listen, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from New York, so I'm a city guy, right? So I see a tree, it's a tree, right? So now I'm here so, in Virginia. So you didn't fact check him on these tree identification? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure he was in a position to do any fact no. checking. No, I didn't. I really, that sounds strange to me. He really knew what he was talking about. <laughs> well, I sure hope he Well, it looked good. <laughs> yeah. Well, and kind of to what you're sort of talking about, one of the things that we've been really blessed with is when we first started, we kind of one of the things that we said the ideal thing for us would be to find a arborist that's looking to get out of business, that's older, looking mm -hmm. to retire, but not fully retire and essentially either sell us his business or kind of do some sort of joint thing. And we talked about that early and I don't say we want to forgot about it or we forgot about it, but uh, has it been two years now? Almost. Yeah, it's been about two about years. About two years ago, we uh, got a call from somebody interviewing, looking for different arborists to do some pruning for a client of his. And so we got, I don't know why, but he loved us. And so, but we've, we have ended up actually just falling into that perfect relationship where he's been, he's a retired guy that's been doing tree work in the area since the 80s and has just, so that kind of that knowledge that Trip mm -hmm. had when he came to you, that's been developed in us, especially because we've had this real good mentoring and still have this really fantastic mentoring situation. Um, Cause I feel like the business side we've, you know, Martin and I both had uh, different enterprises before. So there's mm -hmm. part of that that we understand, but it's the technical part of what are these, what are these living things that we're dealing with and they're different and that we've just been really fortunate to have a, a great mentor. So um, let me ask you a question. So every time there's a thunderstorm around here, do you guys like open up champagne and say, this is great? I mean, is, this how, is that how it works? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you no. know, weather's weird because it's either yeah. we don't work because the weather. Yeah. You know, true. it's too wet. It's, mm -hmm. too, it's just right. too much of a mess getting in people's yards or it's a boon for our business. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, unlike that great government job I had with all those benefits, you know, no work, no pay. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. This, yeah. So. Yeah. 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 So what would you say, I mean, what, what would you say is your most difficult task? I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, 100 foot poplar to me looks like a, a daunting task, whether you're, you know, whether you let it fall on the ground and it goes boom, or whether you're going up there cutting to pieces. What would you say is the most, the most challenging and also the, I guess, the, the riskiest for you from perspective of safety? Vines. Safety. <laughs> I, honestly, I would say we probably would all have different uh, opinions or items. Mine to me is towing. Anytime we get in a vehicle and move from site to site, towing vehicles, okay. making that is, I feel like that's the part that's going to get us, put us, potentially put us out of business is if we're hauling a, a load of logs and we didn't check and make sure the trailer was hooked up right and we mm -hmm. lose that. You know, you don't hear about that very often, right, but that's, right, that's, true. that's my number one paranoia for the business is that's what's going to, not yeah. dropping something on somebody's house, it's having something go while we're in transit between jobs and, and the shops. Yeah, yeah and I, I think kind of along the same lines of not specifically answering your question or not with the answer you thought, I think the logistic coordination is probably the, the most challenging aspect, you know, right. from scheduling, making sure that, you know, we're syncing up with the client schedule, our subcontractor schedule, if we're working with cranes, having the right tools there, the right people. We don't have a shop currently, or, or a central location, which right. just complicates things. So we have gear spread out between our three different houses, locations. And um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's probably the most uh, emotionally taxing and, and mentally taxing. I think when you get in the actual job, typically it, it's generally straightforward. Um, there are those jobs where you're very happy to get out of the tree at the end of the day or have the tree on the ground safely and, mm -hmm. you know, go drink a little bit of water and, and calm down. But um, I think the other challenge is just with as we grow, um, Phil's oldest is working for us. We have a couple other full-time employees and we've had, gosh, probably three or four other, right. if, if not more, kind of come and go throughout the last couple of years. But um, it's, it's the risk factor to the employees that really mm -hmm. kind of keeps us up at night where oh. it's a trade off between we want to give them time on the saw, develop them, get to a point where we can actually hand off the business to them in a lot of ways or step back. And yet we don't want to be putting them into a position where we're having to go home and, you know, tell Amy, Phil's wife, why 
Jaden's not coming home at the end of the day. So right. it's, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys work with, let's see, I mean, equipment that is very dangerous. Right. I mean, those those right. saws are pretty big and yeah. pretty powerful. So I would assume that, you know, the safety feature has, is yeah. very important. Right. Well, the, the, the last couple of days, actually, I, I don't know if it's the most challenging, but probably my favorite are very technical rigging jobs where in both cases, we didn't actually have to climb the tree but we had to set rigging lines in multiple trees and use all, every piece of gear we had to safely, you know, winch the tree out of another tree it may have been mm. resting in and get it down into the ground. But, it, you know, those fun kind of mm. engineering, problem solving <laughs> right. jobs like that are. Well, are one of you is, a, is an engineer, right? Because, yeah, I mean, that's, okay, okay, that's okay, me. So you, okay, so yeah. you're, you're the one that is the, I'm not going to say the, the brains behind the operation. You, know? <laughs> you can say it. <laughs> he likes to think so. I like to think so. I, at least I like to, to work be told on the, that. Who's coming to work tomorrow? I'm trying to figure out if it's, if it's you or Martin. Right. I don't want to say, yeah, he's not. He's just, he's just the guy the next on the tree. <laughs> so I, I noticed on your website, are all, are all three of you have, were paratroopers or just... So just tri Trip and I... Trip yeah, and you were the yeah. paratroopers. Does that... Does that help at all since you used to like... You, you know, Trip probably height. has the most time jumping from aircraft. I think I only got nine jumps in in my <laughs> Army career. He had more than that. And yet he's the least comfortable in the, in the trees. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not to brag on Trip. That's just because we've had him doing all the quotes. But uh, yeah. it, we, Trip and I have talked about it where it's like, man, we, we've done this. We've jumped out of aircraft. We've rappelled out of helicopters. And yet you get into a tree and it's... Your tie-in point is unknown, you know, mm -hmm. the health of the tree, is it right. going to fail on you? Um, yeah, it's a, different, it's, it's a different game. But I assume when you're jumping out of the plane, you got parachutes, right? You do, yeah. Okay. And you hope so, it's going to open. Yeah, oh, you hope, okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's another risk factor. Right. Right? Still hoping. This is going to open, that's right. Well, up on the tree, I mean, I, now do you tie yourselves up in such a way that if you slip, you, you don't fall or... So you're always tied in at least once, and if you're cutting, you know, we have to be tied in a second time in case you hit mm -hmm. your primary climbing line and cut that, we have a backup okay. uh, climbing line. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, industry standard. Anytime you're using a power saw, you have to have a second tie-in point. Right. Um, and I'm sure, you know, Phil could hit on more, but the, the yeah, on the industrial rope access, kind of how the standards are uh, higher and known time points. And, well, and that's the, so I've had 25 years of doing uh, engineering rope work. So doing like facade inspections from ropes. And in that environment, it's just a very, and that was kind of getting a little more comfortable doing the trees is, you know, when you're tying off on a building, you know, hey, this anchor, we, I can easily tell that this is gonna hold 10,000 pounds. In a tree, you get down to like three inches or so, and you're mm. like, well, so your anchors is the biggest thing of like the unknown factor of, and I think the biggest risk. So when we go up, we're always, before we start climbing, you're checking the base of the tree to see, hey, is it healthy? You know, is the whole thing gonna tip over if we right. start rigging into it or hanging from it? Um, you know, we do a bounce test on the anchor. We try to get a piggyback, you know, where you have two guys loading the line. So there's things we can do as a standard, but it's uh, that's the biggest difference, probably with jumping out of the plane too. It's like the tree. There's so many different varieties, and sometimes you just you actually can't see really well what your rope is going around in the tree. So it's um, I don't know. So that that ends up being a big I don't know safety risk that yeah. we we try to mitigate that as much as possible. You know, so of course, yeah. Question: So we've got we've got a comment here, a question from a viewer, Fud Guy. He wants to know: Do you guys move trees? So if he has a tree planted in one house and he would like it moved somewhere, transplanted yeah. and moved somewhere else, do you guys right. do that? No. We we haven't gotten into it at all yet. I mean, that is uh, definitely part of the industry, and I think you know whether it's planting or or transplanting. There's a lot of growth opportunities for us, but we, we don't currently do that. And depending on the size of the tree, it gets very, very expensive. Um, mm. I know, you know sometimes when you have these historic, you know, ancient trees and they, you know, university is expanding, they'll try to move the tree and it's, you know, I, I'm sure hundreds of thousands wow, of dollars to do that's it. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's going to be a big crane, I assume, pulling that thing off. <laughs> to get the tree, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the tree yeah. out and moved to another place. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So on the, on the business side, yeah. 
mm -hmm. of being like, what are, what are some of the things that I guess maybe either were unexpected or that were an entrepreneur challenge, like maybe on, in terms of not what you do in the tree part, but on the behind mm -hmm. the scenes of running a business like this, what was sort of unexpected or challenging that you guys have overcome in that way? I think, so the kind of out of the gate, what was really helpful for us was none of us needed the business to succeed to support our families. Mm. Martin was working full time, Trip was still in the army, I had whatever else I was doing. <laughs> so, but we just didn't need the business to be successful out of the gate. And mm -hmm. so uh, we were able to work uh, kind of a couple years without really, I mean, I don't think we had cut a check to ourselves for a year and a half or more. Um, and so, but with that too, kind of the organization aspect, we had, Tripp was doing almost all the administrative because he, for a year, he was down in Mississippi with the Army before he got out. So he was doing all of that remotely. And Martin and I, the task of actually completing the work fell on us here in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. uh, when he came back, we kind of still had that arrangement. And I feel like it was sometime earlier this year or late last year, we had it or whenever it was, we kind of had, or no, it was la about this time of the last year, we had, um, we just sort of reorganized what we were doing and kind of split our tasks. So I took over all the accounting, bookkeeping, and kind of that aspect of, uh, of the business and just kind of tracking the money. Trip really just took over doing sales, which is part of, like, that's been our biggest thing is like, hey, we, there's a lot of guys that do tree stuff. There's a lot of guys, I mean, kind of any industry you're going into, there's other, there's competition. Right. Yep. And we realized the thing that's going to set us apart is, we're going to show up when we say we're going to show up. Which is important. <laughs> well, yeah, because that's like you talk to most people about trying to get service guys to do stuff for them. And one, they can't find them. Two, if they contact them, they're lucky if they contact them back or show up. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of that responsiveness. We realize that's the thing we want to – that's who we want to be. We want to be the guys that are incredibly responsive. And on the sales side, that meant really sort of freeing trip up to go and just do sales. Mm -hmm. So, and then, uh, and then we shifted the logistics of scheduling and, and making sure that all the stuff is at the jobs and the jobs run smoothly, that fell on Martin. So kind of that three-way division with, between the three of us, I feel has really put us, you, kind of made doing all the, the business admin side of it, the accounting and. Right, yeah, Trip was dealing with all that. And so it's kind of, oh, and now I'm, right. yeah. So it's just, I think last year we saw a, a real smoothing of our workflow and our efficiency mm. and, and therefore profitability. And, and, and I think going too, forward is aligning be, people with their their skills and their experience yeah. and their, mm -hmm. yeah, their, I mean, trip, pe people love trip. And, um, you know, it, it, it really does put kind of our best foot forward from a sales standpoint. And, um, you know, I struggle with the quotes because I, you know, it's the pressure of like putting a price tag on something. Yep. And, you know, I want to be like, well, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? How much will you pay? Right. And, and when we first started out, uh, many of our jobs were either friends or, or referrals of friends. And so it has that added pressure, right? Of, yep. You know, you want to give your friend a good deal, but mm -hmm. we got to make sure we're making money and you want mm -hmm. them to think they're getting a good deal, right? Like all those <laughs> things. the temptation is like undersell yourself. Right. Just right. to sell exactly. yourself exactly. short of what yeah. you're worth. Right. Yeah. So we, we had started, at least for me, I started liking the time and material jobs because it's like, hey, look, we're, this is our hourly rate and, and we'll give you a few hours at that rate. And if you like it, we'll keep going. But now I think I'm probably just happy with trip doing the quotes. But I, the d &M, <laughs> the downside is... Then the client is sitting there watching you and watching their clock or watching their wristwatch, you know, and seeing right. the price tag go up. Where, and this is a, a lesson I learned too late with my construction company when I started, but really, you gotta charge enough for the client to be happy mm -hmm. and for it, really for their satisfaction, right? Yep. If you're not charging enough, no one's going to be happy at the that's end right. of the day. Exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're not the cheapest guys out there, but that's not our product. You know, we don't want to be doing cheap work. We want to make sure that we can, you know, right. leave you happy with the work we do and, and really leave the site clean and, and do what we well, can. Well, listen, the, the important thing, and, and, and it's what certainly attracted me to you guys, first of all, you have the, the service. Um, and as you mentioned, I mean, you call, you set a date, and you're there on time, right? And that's important because... 
you know, I also work, right? So right. that means I have to take a day off or half a day off or whatever time off. And you sit there and somebody doesn't show up and now you're upset, right? right. Um, and from New York would use another word, but anyway, so right. we're upset, right? <laughs> and so um, it's nice to have that going for you, the service. And um, I mean, certainly the price I thought was a good price as far as I was concerned. Which takes but also, a lot. That takes which means a lot, lot for me. Yeah, for, me yeah, right. but for this guy, that means a lot. Um, but the important thing is also you're, you're reachable. You're, you're, you, I can talk to you guys. Um, you know, I was there when you were cutting down the tree, and I said, you mind if I watch you guys? It, you know, I mean, other guys would say, no. no you you do. You get out of here. we got to do our stuff. I just, not because I want to make sure you're doing it right, because I have no clue what you're doing, but just because I, I enjoy watching, right? So it would, right. It just what you guys to me is amazing. Yeah. So, so you're approachable, and so, I mean, you know, it's, it shows. So, I, you know, I, I thank you for that, and, and I know you guys will do very well. And it's, it's an interesting... You know, how you guys start your business is a little interesting and different than some other it's people. A, some yeah, other people, you know, it's like they start their business and it's like, oh, my God, I have to, this has to work because this is, this is what I mm -hmm. want to do. It's good my livelihood. For you guys, thank goodness, it was a situation where you all liked it, right? And you see, let's see if this works. And, right. and apparently it is working. So congratulations. Fantastic. And so before we head out, what's the yeah. best way for people to get in touch with you guys? Uh, really, the website, uh, SeavilleTreeService.com. And they can request work through there, and, and Trip will promptly get in touch with them and right. schedule a, a quote. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah, it is pretty easy. You go to Seville uh, Seville Tree Tree Service. Service. Com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then you hit, I think it's quote, and you tell them what you want, and then you get an email right back, and right. and then and eventually Trip calls you and say, "All right, I'm here. What, you know, <laughs> let's do it." What do you yeah. want? To and do? the the what you want done doesn't have to be particularly eloquent or even. Accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Trip will figure that Thank out. Well, that's the thing. It's like triple call. He was looking at me when he said that, right? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> what did Xavier say? He didn't mention that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, thank you guys both so much for thank joining us. It's been yeah. a lot of fun. Really right. pleasure. Thank you. Thank thank you so much. We'll definitely we'll have you guys back and we'll rotate yep. and put Trip yep. in. Put right. Trip in, that's right. Let's we'll see what he has to say. That's right. right. <laughs> for sure. But thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Be thank you. Uh, that was that was fun. Yeah, it's always, no, it was, it was good. It's always amazing just to see the different ways that people get into entrepreneurship, into, business. That's into right. a business, That's right? right? The different ways that you can go through to start, the different paths that you can travel um, to to start a business and be successful at it, and the different lessons that you can learn on the way. And just I, I loved the emphasis that Martin had on like you don't, as an entrepreneur, and I tell this to people a lot, don't undersell yourself. That's like, right. Do not. Try to get business by being so much less expensive than everyone else that people have the perception then that you're not, you must not be very good at what you do. Well, it's, it's, it's twofold. One is you can have that perception. People mm -hmm. might say these guys can't be very good because they're so cheap. Or the second one is, okay, they're, they're cheap, but then you realize we're not making any money. In other exactly. words, we can't survive like this. Mm -hmm. so, so sooner or later, you have to raise your prices. It's like you said, if, if it's a word of mouth and it's like, wait a minute, he charged you X and he's charging me yes. this, why? I thought you said, exactly. so it's a, it's a to, balance. You have, you have to have to, the confidence in how much you're worth and price accordingly. Exactly. And I think people, people do respect that and, and understand I think they do. that I it's think worthwhile. They do. And you know, if I got to say something, because I, I, I know, I know Jim, my wife's thinking, why isn't he wearing his jacket? Well, these guys were arborists, right? And so I, I got to look like an arborist when I'm interviewing an arborist. So I just, you know, sweetheart, I'm not to, wearing a jacket for that reason. Well, I was glad because for once, I am oh. more well-dressed. Oh, boy, here we my go. Father. Usually the reverse happens, but today... I was the one that, that yeah, was I, I look good in pinstripes. And it's that Yankee you thing. Pinstripes. It is that Yankee All thing. Right. What can we resist? That, that Yankee thing. So, ah, Nidler Serpy commenting. Very well said. Quality work and value prices. There you are. That, exactly. that Nidler was there. Yeah, what are you thinking of? And then, and oh, goodness, we, uh, Rosalia said, we will certainly send you, Rosalia, we will send you the number for Revelation Vineyard to, to get that wine, wine over to New York. And for those of you who want to be sure to check out Revelation Vineyard, they're on Facebook. Um, you can see them. They share today's story. You'll be able to, today's show, you'll be able to find them and be sure to check them out and, and enjoy some of, that, some of that wine. And then when, you're, when your tree falls while you're drinking wine, you can <laughs> call Shard's well, Service. If it's falling, they very fell, it's, it's falling, too late. Here, it's too late. That's right. <laughs> but uh, this has been a lot of fun. It's been, yeah. it's been a blast today just to learn all this new information um, 
really, really a great time. And next week is going to be fun as well. We are going to have on Lily DeRay. Ah, Lily. So she is okay. the, I mean, she is a fantastic artist. Uh, she's, she's dynamite. Been doing, she's, she's dynamite. She's, she's, she's a, a great she's interview. She's got business acumen. Um, she's a great um, musician. She writes her own songs. She plays them. She's been playing at Common House. Oh, uh, okay. Once she, I know she was on. I think last night she was on the uh, the top the the sky roof of uh, Common Bo- Common House, the okay. uh, the co working space and and membership there. So that's going to be exciting. She's going to come to talk about what she does. She's going to sing or she's going to talk to us. That's what I want. She's definitely going to talk to us. Okay. The singing will be entirely up to her. We <laughs> okay. will not we will not force. Well, she's not shy. Her, so she's I, not I, shy. I, I so she may well bring the uh, guitar. So you'll be in for a treat. Our next week, you know, just another member of a great entrepreneurship family, Olga Morsta, her grandma, the founder of Forward Adelante, uh, Fernando Garé, her brother, we That's had right. on from House of Cuts. Exactly. So it's going to be it's going to be a blast, I think, next week. And so be sure to check out next week's show. Uh, be sure to share today. If you, again, if you have any other news on resources for entrepreneurs, any Latino entrepreneurs you want us to interview, that to, yes. to, to let us know. Send us let a us message. Know. Uh, you can always message us at today manana. You can message me at Alexander Erpy on Facebook. You can give us a call. Uh, you can go to emergentfs.com, todaymanana.com to find all the shows, including today's later on. As always, it's such a pleasure to have you all watching us. Uh, thanks again to Cristel Noel, our, our powering sponsor. Thank you to Emergent Financial Services, our presenting sponsor. And for Adelante, as always, thanks, Judah, for running. He had a the top show today. I mean, we he used did. all four spots exactly. at, the, at the end there. You had to sit, so, sit everybody and make sure they're talking into the microphone. I'm sure he's thinking about me. <laughs> Is he talking to the microphone? But anyway. Is it Xavier doing a good job exactly. today? So thank you, Judah. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks to the I Love Seville Network, which is the one place you can find today, manana. And as always, thank you to the viewers without whom there would be no show. It would just be two Cuban guys sitting in a... Uh, empty studio with Judah (laughs) chatting it up and nobody watching. So thank you all so much for joining us and until we see you next week, hasta mañana.